Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about Kappa architecture. It is one of the mainstream architecture designs out there, apart from Lambda architecture. And this video, I'll talk about what is it and why you may want to use it. If you're new to my channel, I'm Reis Ang, and I make videos about data engineering, cloud, and also Microsoft Azure. Consider subscribe to my channel or press like to that blue button if you do enjoy this video. What is Kappa architecture? It is essentially a design pattern for big data processing. And if you are familiar with Lambda architecture, by the way, I created a video about Lambda architecture and it's available in my channel. Just check the link up here. And okay, Kappa architecture is basically a simplified version of Lambda architecture because Lambda has batch and stream path, whereas Kappa architecture just have stream path. And just to illustrate how this works, let's go to the slide. Let's deep dive on what this Kappa architecture looks like. Now, firstly, we used to have batch and stream data. We still have batch and stream data, obviously. And with Kappa architecture, unlike Lambda, we only have one processing, which is stream processing. They come all come here, uh, whether it's a push from the stream data source or it's a pull for the batch data source, can either way. And they all go to one serving layer. So it's essentially so a simplified version of Lambda architecture. And just to illustrate and deep dive this further, I'm going to break, the, break this down into these four layers. Data sources, store compute, storage model, and serve. This is the data sources, as you know it. Now with the store and compute for the Kappa architecture, it looks a lot simpler. We have a routing, which could be a event grid for in Azure. It could be Azure Function, Azure Logic App, or AWS Lambda or GCP Function. And that essentially allows you to ingest the data into the stream engine. With the stream engine, there can be a lot of options out there. Uh, uh, traditionally, it could be Spark streaming. And now that could mean a Azure Databricks or AWS uh, Databricks. You could use Azure Streaming Analytics or you could use, if you are an AWS person, it could be AWS Kinesis or the stream engine. Now from this engine, the data output can be stored into a relational database, NoSQL or data lake storage. Again, this depends on the cloud technologies out there. Some of them don't have that functionality. I'm familiar with Azure and stream analytics can push the data into one of the store uh, storage uh, services. It, it can also be uh, combined or club with a machine learning resource or Azure Machine Learning Studio, for example, so that it can enable the machine learning engineer or data scientist to do that machine learning work. Obviously, there is they can you can also serve it directly to the users with some sort of a BI or business intelligence service like Power BI. Could, you could surface the data output directly into web application or mobile app. And effectively, this is the Kappa architecture design may look like. Now, just to summarize there, we have typically a security monitoring services involved uh, and also governance. This could be some sort of data catalog or data lineage and classification tool. It could mean like Azure Purview in Microsoft Azure ecosystem. Benefits, Kappa architecture, it is, well, compared to Lambda architecture, it is less pipeline or codes to handle or manage. That's a big, big benefit, to be fair. And obviously, everything will be now real-time analytics because it's all 
treated as streams. Some of the drawbacks here that is arguable. Um, I would say not all stream engines in the cloud, I mean, like AWS, Azure, or GCP, they may or may not able to persist the queue, which is the streams uh, data usually in a queue or some sort of topics indefinitely. This to allow for historical uh, data to be stored uh, a bit longer because typically stream engine doesn't keep data for much longer. And stream pipeline and this architecture require all these stream engines to, to use and most people are not familiar with it. So if you're working with a client in a project to adopt just fully stream and event-based pipeline, uh, they may have some technical barrier here to adopt. All right, guys, that's it for today's video about Kappa architecture. I hope you learned something about this. Drop your questions in the comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos about data engineering, architecture, cloud, and so on and so forth. And yes, and as always, like that blue button as well and support the channel. And thanks very much. See you later.